Here's your Storm Track 7 forecast. Good evening, meteorologist Bree Sullivan, and I wanted to update you on the latest information that we have about Saturday's storms. Confirmed by the National Weather Service, we have nine so far. We did have that one violent tornado that was in central Iowa, went through winter set, six fatalities with that. So that was an EF4. That's the first one we've had in Iowa since 2013. We did see four EF2s coming through on Saturday and then two EF1s. So it was a very active day and unfortunately seven total fatalities on that day. I want to take a closer look at the one in Vinton. Now this went about eight and a half miles. It was on the ground for just shy of 11 minutes and from start to finish in Benton County. The other one I wanted to highlight was the one, the EF4. It started in Maxburg, traveled through four counties before wrapping up in Newton, traveled nearly 70 miles and nearly 800 yards wide on its uh, widest width. Now taking a look, we went from storm reports to snow reports. The more north you were, the less shoveling you had to do. But as we travel south, you'll see those numbers tick up for just a little bit. Take a look, Buck Creek, Delaware County, seven inches. That was the highest total I saw. Six and a half for Mount Vernon and then a bunch of fours. So a lot of people doing a lot of shoveling. Keep that shovel handy. Threat Tracker does show green for the next several days. We do have tomorrow looking good with lots of sunshine. A little more cloud cover on Wednesday, but things change by Thursday. Another good thing that we have going on, we have those light winds tonight. They do pick up tomorrow afternoon, gusting up near 25, but as that sun sets, those winds will back down. Taking a look at how this plays out, clear skies tonight. Fresh snowpack underneath means our temperatures are really going to drop off through the overnight. As we go through tomorrow morning, no issues getting those kids to school. Very excited about that. Then as we go into tomorrow evening, some models have a little flurry activity. Most do not, but it's nearly not going to impact your Tuesday evening plans. Then Wednesday rolls in and we're still going to see some sunshine, a little more cloud cover, especially the second half of the day. Plan on some increasing clouds, but it's not until the overnight hours that we have snow chances coming in. If you look down towards the southern half of the state, that's where our highest totals are expected. Lesser amounts in our viewing area, which I think most people at this point are fine with. Winter just is not letting up. Future Tracker, let's play this out. This is Wednesday evening going into Thursday. This is midnight. Some snow just working its way into our area. Notice the darker color. That's where the heaviest snow is going to lie, according to this model. It does skirt along that southern border before it takes off uh, uh, kind of the, the southeast. But future models, models that have come in since then, are kind of pushing this down to the south. Not ready to believe them just yet. Then it pushes out, and then in time for Friday. Now we are watching the system up to the north. There is a chance that this might swing a little bit further south and clip us with just a little more snow. But right now, that just remains to be seen. We got to get through Thursday before we can worry about Friday. Tonight, those temperatures really fall off into the teens under those clear skies, light winds. Tomorrow, winds pick up gusting to near 25, but we will have sunshine and melting highs, 30s up to the north and northeast, some 40s down to the south and southwest. It will be a nice day. That's going to be the warmest day. 30s as we head into Wednesday, and then as we look into Thursday, it's still going to be cooler, that much cooler, into the 20s, and we have some 30s and those increasing snow chances. Could see that a little uh, clipper come in Friday, but things do turn dry into the weekend, rebounding by Sunday. Look at that, 40 for the high.